Okay, no gotcha. worries. Hey guys, welcome back to a seller sessions today, Thursday. Joe is back with us today. We're going to do a deep dive on Pinterest. I know we've threatened it numerous times, but we're going to let Joe roll with it. Uh, but first, he's got some Shopify announcements that he wants to talk about. Yesterday, in total, there were 17 new announcements by my understanding. I've not checked them out yet, but uh, Joe said so, so I take that as a gospel. So over to you, Joseph. How's everybody doing today? Okay, so yesterday was a big day for Shopify. They basically made a major announcement um, on things they've been working on in every single department. Um, they started with some some stats. Uh, 40, they've seen a 45% increase in seller stores for first time purchasers, which is huge. Um, and their POS uh, sellers, people that actually have cash registers and brick and mortar, they saw a 70% decline in their sales over six weeks, but replaced 94% of it moving online, which is really cool. Uh, but Shopify is doing all kinds of crazy stuff over the next few months, all in place, probably start Q4. So let's see, they, um, they, they announced integration with Pinterest, integration with Facebook, direct integration with Instagram, which means now you can actually have your store, your Shopify store on Instagram and sell through Shopify on Instagram. You can also now natively from your Shopify account post Google shopping ads. Uh, you don't have to do a separate feed, which is which is big. Uh, no more cross border garbage. If you have people in other countries that are purchasing from you, they will see the prices in their denominations and you will receive your payment in whatever your store is set to receive. So if you normally get cash, you'll always get cash. You, so if you want to sell in another country, you don't have to apply and send in all kinds of paperwork and get suspended and, and go through any of that that long BS, basically. Um, they're changing the entire editing system uh, on the back end. Up until now, you could only really customize the front page. Your product pages were all about the same. They're going completely modular. So you'll be able to customize anything in the entire store, which is really cool. That's that's big. Um, let's see what else. Uh, they're going to add subscribe and save features and more more native marketing features within Shopify itself, which is a big deal. And plus they have Shopify email now too. And that's free through October. I would sign up for it. There's always gonna be a free plan, but I would sign up for it because they have uh, templates. You can email past buyers, current buyers from directly within Shopify and they're getting open rates that are 30% higher than industry standards right now. Excellent. Uh, they're also adding Shopify chat. so. Your buyers will be able to chat directly with you from their phone or their, you know, their uh, their computer, which is pretty cool. And let's see what else. Uh, they've added the Pinterest integration, which means you can directly, um, with no effort, post your products right on Pinterest and sell within Pinterest. Um, Shopify chat. They have the, the, the app, the Shopify app, which they released last week. So they're expanding the back end to include purchasing and sourcing. So you can put your, you can uh, shoot POs for purchases from your suppliers out of the back end now. And you can receive the inventory in on the back end. You can process returns back into inventory, issue um, uh, return uh, shipping receipts, uh, all that stuff. They are uh, they're within six months going to be offering installment payments to buyers. So you'll get paid in full as the seller, and then they handle the installment payer payment through Shopify. Shopify is actually a financial institution now, um, and they have been for a while. That's where ShopPay comes from. Shopify is also adding a full financial center for sellers. You'll, you can borrow money from Shopify. Small small business loans that you normally wouldn't get from a bank because they they know your history. Um, you'll be able to have a credit card attached to it or attached to your bank account. You'll be able to process your your business through your site um, uh, through your business, which is that's a a big expansion for them. Um, they're adding Shopify local curbside pickup for the brick and mortar stores, and they're adding a uh, a, a delivery app. 
so you can that has um, a route optimization on it and everything. So you can set up and have people deliver if, you, if you're also running a store, which is pretty cool. Um, and they're adding a performance, uh, an entire performance model to the back end of Shopify to help with site speed. So every every time you change anything on your Shopify site, it will show you what your speed and what your metrics were before the change and after the change, and you can undo it. So you can go back and remove things that are negatively affecting you know, your, your site. Site speed is ranking. Hmm. Um, and that, I guess that's it. That's pretty, pretty damn fine. So before right. we get into things, I just want to say some hellos to the regulars. Adam gives a thumbs up. Yelchin's back. Hello, guys. Nice to meet you again. Cy B is here. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi, Danny. Hi, Joe. Hasing is here. Hello, Danny and Joe. Kwasim is back saying hello, everyone. Andrew is here. Uh, two hands up. And Danielle says, can't wait for this to get going. In the feed, we've got Sharon Evan is back. Jason Chu is here as well. Leo Lemin is in the feed as well. David Cookson. Ebru is here. Uh, okay, you're taking care of the dog while I, uh, I say hello to everyone. <laughs> Kwasim is here, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, Alex Wyatt is joined the call. Hello, Alex. Hope you are well. Let's quickly check in the comments. Yeah, Andrew Kramer is here saying hello. So Joe is going to, once he gets back in his chair, we're going to do a full rundown of um, or Pinterest. And we're going to start with Joe. Now you're back. Uh, let's start with the with SEO. Okay, SEO. SEO is the essence of Pinterest. Pinterest is basically a tree of RSS feeds. All major categories and Pinterest topics are basically an RSS feed. When you first sign up for Pinterest, it asks you to choose topics that interest you. You're choosing RSS feeds. So then when you log in, every time you log into Pinterest, you get the feeds, the most recent pins that fall under those feeds on your screen. Your goal as a seller is to be at the top of those feeds. So SEO on Pinterest revolves around targeting those feeds, basically. You have 32 top-level um, categories, and there's like 30,000 topics. They're all followable. Yeah. Um, but how, how, do you, how do you discern here? Like when you're approaching this, you got, as you said, like it, you, you can't go too far and wide with this. You need to have focus. What what would be your way of focusing when you know you've got 30,000 feeds? How do you break down the verticals so it's more manageable to look um, at? So something like do-it-yourself home decor. Mm -hmm. There's 106 million people that follow do-it-yourself home decor. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so what 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 I do, um, I do it a little, a little different because I, I'm looking at data. I don't do just one pin and yeah. and and – because it's, it's all about targeting. If you get your targeting done right and your SEO right, you're going to appear in feeds. Mm -hmm. So what we do, what I do is I look at the categories and then I do a search on Google and I do, it's a site search. So it's site Pinterest.com. And then in, um, in quotes, I put uh, topics with a backslash. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm doing home, it would be topics backslash home. Um, I'll put it in the chat here so that everybody has it. It's real easy, but it gives you a list of all the followable topics under your category that you're looking at. Yeah. Um, so that would be part of a part of a title. So if I'm doing do-it-yourself home decor, um, I'm going to target that. That's going to be in my title. And then I'm going to choose keywords that Pinterest tells me are followed and have volume. Hmm. Um can I, sh how do I share my screen? Yeah, just share your screen and then I'll add it to the feed. And then for those yeah. who hear the play playback on the podcast, we'll talk it through what we are showing. While you're doing that, I'll quickly say hello. Tiff's back. Good morning, guys. Matt Parker is here. Hi, guys. Thanks for tackling this topic. Uh, Henrietta's back. Good morning, and Danny and Joe. Right, so you can pull that up on the screen. Why are you doing that? Just a reminder, if you haven't done so 
already or if you want to to get show notes and and, and uh, replays etc you can always go to sellersessions.com uh, we update the show notes weekly but obviously doing seven shows a week at the moment uh, they may be a bit behind, but that's a good place to go back to if you don't want to go through the Facebook groups or my follow on my page and then have to scroll through all of the content. Uh, another comment here. Yes. So where is Miro? Miro's got an appointment today. Uh, so he was unfortunately won't be able to join us, but I'm sure he will be joining us back in the fold as of next week. If you guys haven't done so already, um, Grab a ticket for Brandy by Women starts Wednesday next week. I'll show in the uh, the ticker below. It is a Brandy to buy women, uh, dot com. Uh, where is it? I can't find it in the ticker. One second. Here we go. Grab a free ticket at Brandy to buy women dot com. All right, Joe. So let's take a look at this. Pull this up in the feed. What we got here? Okay, so this is what we we look for. We do a search on Google mm -hmm. to find out what the topics are that are followed. So yeah. if you name a board, um, Danny's Weekend Fun, nobody's mm -hmm. going to see it because that's yeah. not a followed category. And, and to be topic. honest, I'd rather keep that quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Apart from 4 o'clock till 5, then, then the rest is off the table. But anyway, right. go on. Sorry. Yeah. So let, let's say you sell a, a, a home decor product. So yep. what we would do is we would target the website Pinterest up here, and then mm -hmm. we're looking for URLs that have in the URL. Any any Pinterest topic is going to have in the URL the word yep. topics, and these are specific commands. Site and in URL are specific mm. commands for Google search, and what it does, I'll show you exactly what it does. See this right here, topics, home tips. Yeah. Topics, home decor, topics, home tours, topics, home projects. All of these are followable home related. Um, so you so people that listen to the podcast, you're doing this from Google. It's not like you've gone to a site. You just put them in quotes. Yep. <clears throat> so remind me again. It's site. What it's site? Top. Then Pinterest dot com. Yep. And then in URL. Yep. And in, then the top in quotes, yeah, yeah. Uh, backslash topics, backslash, and then part of the key, the base of the keyword phrase that you're you're shooting for. So yeah. rather than go for home decor, I just went for home yeah. because I want to see all the categories. I want a lot because I'm going to post a lot of pins. And the whole thing about Pinterest is you want to drill down your targeting on each pin to a specific tight little niche, mm -hmm. and that's how you get into those feeds. So I'll take this. So I have all these here. So now, you know, one pin I might target to um, home, home home cleaning. Another one I might target to home interior design. Uh, another one would be do-it-yourself home decor. Uh, another one would be home designing. Those are all titles that I can use for pins around this one uh, decoration that you happen to sell because it falls under home decor. It falls under home designing. It falls under, um, you know, these different, some of these different things, not home cleaning, but, uh, you know, just some of these different topics. So that's where you start. So then I'd come back here and I would go to create a pin and I'm going to put that right in my title. Mm -hmm. So I would do DIY home decor. So that's shall, I, shall, shall I do this fake guru thing where I say, guys, this is such a nugget. It's such a real <laughs> nugget. We're, we're spoiling you here. It's such a nugget. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. want. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. So then what we do is we come over to search and this is what I've learned. And I've figured, figured out yeah. this recently is if you use keywords that Pinterest is telling you are searched a lot, you're going to come, you're, you're going to come up at the top of the feeds. Your goal is to come up in the top of the feeds of all with all your pins. So what we do is we just start out by typing in home. Yeah. Okay? And then. So, yeah, so you type home, then you've got suggestive text. And then from there, right. you can then build out a, the long tail. Yeah. So, and that's exactly what we do. But w what we do is we, so we'll start with home decor and then we'll go to uh, ideas. Quick right. question. Then on that. Again, can, and it drops down again and we go to yeah. living room. So what I found is if you do this three at least three times, yeah, 
you're going to come up in the top of you're, you're going to be a better optimized to come up at the top of the feeds even four times is make makes it even better so how do you know how the suggest works you know like with um on amazon it can be manipulated by sending third party track traffic in some cases not so much now but it was at some point um what what is the criteria for appearing there in the suggested it's search search volume it's just search volume okay it's cool. search volume yep and yep. if you've if you've taken my workshop or watched my youtube videos I talk about getting keywords from this row right here. This this row right here just disappeared last week. Yeah. So it's no longer there. So I'll take this now and I'll go back to the pin that I'm creating. And this now becomes part of my title also. Yeah. So I'll do this and then a space. So that's my title for my pin. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got, you know, this home, do it yourself home to course, which is followed by 106 million people. Mm -hmm. And then I have all these keywords that Pinterest told me uh have high search volume and people are asking this is what people are searching on pinterest yeah so there's my title i know i'm going to be coming up in some of those feeds and i'm going to get love from pinterest mm -hmm. this. so then i'll come here into the description and i'll write a description so if, if i'm just sending people straight to amazon i'm mm -hmm. going to want to put a call to action in there yeah. I put put you want people to know what what they're going to so yeah. put, put the price in the description it's okay it's, mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing to do that. You don't want to surprise them. Pinterest uh, is a visual planning search engine. Planning means I'm not ready to buy today. It, it does. that. The normal yeah. buying process on Pinterest takes two or three weeks. So you, it's better actually to send people to a landing page where you pre-sell your item and you get the opt-in and mm -hmm. then to Amazon. Yeah. What I've found is a lot of people see the Amazon URL up here when you in, enter the URL and they don't click it. If they're not ready to buy, they don't click it. Um, so it works. I'm seeing, you know, content drives traffic, but I'm mm -hmm. so you don't put the Amazon link there. You put your your landing page, send them to a landing page, pre-sell the item on the landing page and then use your Amazon link from there. Yeah. Uh, that, that works better. Than just sending them that gets you more clicks than just sending them straight to Amazon. So with that having 106 million or whatever it may be, where is the sweet spot? Like if it's, you know, you can maybe aim too high. Where's the middle ground? Like are you doing for midtail or you always go for the highest search volume and work back from there? Um, I normally don't go for the highest search volume because, mm. you know, there's a hundred. Uh, uh, if even if you're in that feed, 106 million people won't see it. Because exactly. Yeah. They're not. They're not all logging in today when yeah. it's there. Yeah. Um, but the higher, the better. You know. I mean, it, there's there's some there's some topics that are only followed by fifty five hundred people. But mm. if there are fifty five hundred Schnauzer lovers, and I'm selling a shirt with a Schnauzer on it, I'm mm. cool with that. Yeah. You know, it's just it's all about targeting and and really what you're looking at. Um, I'll, I don't mind it being a small audience if they are my audience, you know, the yep. exact people I'm targeting. Um, with your descriptions, it's really important that you add, at the end of every description, add four or five hashtags. So what I'll do, the first hashtag is always going to be the business name. So I'd make a hashtag, you know, hashtag e-commerce optimizer. But yep. then this will be a hashtag right here. Do it yourself, home decor. This will be a hashtag. Home decor ideas, maybe uh, home decor living room. I'm going to use these words as my hashtags. And then my last hashtag will be a trending hashtag that is relevant, hmm. which you can get from any of the trending hashtag websites. And the reason for that is uh, it's going to get more eyes on your product. A hashtag is a word that somebody else has spent the time building up and people follow. So you're riding on the coattails of somebody else's work, uh, but it's you know, it's, it is your target audience. So why not? Hmm. Um, the other thing about Pinterest, let me do a search here. And Henry, while you're looking, Henrietta does have a question. When you're saying do it three to four times, do you mean reposting it to different boards? Um, actually, no, what I'm talking about is this using the, so we started with home decor. Okay. And then we have the drop down. So then I picked one word out of this list. I went to ideas then I clicked it again. And I, I added another word, set of words to it. And then I clicked it again because it went that long. Most, a lot of times it doesn't go that long. And I'll pick another one. 
-hmm. So that is multiple keyword, multiple high volume search phrases that are being used on Pinterest in this category. It's yeah. guar you're, you're guaranteeing that you're going to be seen by using mm -hmm. words that they're telling you lots of people are searching. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So when you look at this, uh, let me scroll down just to prove point. What do you look at right now when you, when you first see this? What's the first thing you look at? Where does your eyes go? The me, an image. Yeah, for me, it goes to the video mm. um, because you don't see – there's not that many videos on Pinterest. Yeah. Still, I mean, it's been available for a year. Um, I, I'm moving more and more towards doing as many videos as possible. I mean, and it doesn't have to be movement video. You can use a website like Headliner app, which is free, um, and it has uh, templates and backgrounds, and you can use just images still images and then use their animated text that makes it seem like a video that works just fine it gets more clicks uh they have carousel pins where you can put multiple pin, uh, images in it that you know that the user can flip through they have now story pins i don't see any story oh, that's a video pin um any kind of video pin or story pin is up here in the upper left hand corner will either have a time for the amount of time it runs, or it'll say story. Yeah. And a story pin can have up to 20 images, um, which is also, it's, it's, that's a brand new feature that uh, has been available to iPhones for a while, but it just got rolled out to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really, you mainly access it through, you can always access it, access it through the mobile app. You can't always see today. It's not showing on Chrome, but if I had a mobile app, I could load it right up from a mobile app. But so, I've got a question for you. So uh, why does some get a shit ton of traffic and, but then some people just get no traction? Because some of these, you, you have to do, you have to do things that people want to see and that just aren't boring as all hell. Hmm. Um, and the other part is, is you have to remember people are using their phones and phones are small. Um, if you make me squint to read the text on the image, I'm gone. I'm sorry. I'm done. I yeah. won't even waste my time. So when you look at these, um, let's find a couple examples. This pin right here. Can you really read that text on your phone with a glare on your, your phone screen? Mm -hmm. It's small. You know, that's small as opposed to, you know, this is a, at least a little better, a little bigger. Um, you want your text. You, you have to consider where how people are looking at it. Can you know? Am I going to be able to read that that the uh, script up there on my phone? Absolutely not. Um, or the words the headboard. I'm not going to be able to read that on my phone. Um, so you want big text with white space around it, maybe a, a little shadow behind it to make it jump out. Um, and the other thing, like this, has the 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 black behind the letters now can what is that? i can't even read what it says right there in the middle of the picture um you can barely see it it's the the brand name you can't even i can't even read that brand name there though oh modern mint i only know that because it says it right there um, the other thing is color on images any images that you post on pinterest you want to add saturation to them it makes the color like this the browns in this jump out you want them to pop yeah Yep. So if you add fifty percent saturation to an image with no with nobody in it, it's going to pop out. If you add fifty percent saturation to an image with with people in it, like this, they're going to turn into orange people, like Donald Trump. Hmm. So when you have people in your pins, you want to only add thirty percent saturation. But the truth is, pins with people get clicked on twenty eight percent less than pins without people. Right. So if you can avoid people in your pins. Don't use people in your pins, which really doesn't make a lot of sense because there's nobody in any of these pins. Well, with Facebook ads, generally faces normally get more traction mm -hmm. in terms of click-throughs than uh, ads with no faces on, as yep. an example. So on this platform, which is very visual, it's interesting that faces wouldn't obviously adhere to that either. Right, except for little kids, little babies and stuff, of course. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, when you just when you look at this, it's really easy to look at this and forget that 85 percent of these people are using their phone. Hmm. Pinterest is made up of 60 percent women and 40 percent men. The women do all the purchasing and the average income is above 50 grand. Right. So, you, you know, you're talking about, you know, um, there's 
there's more older people on Pinterest, but the majority of regular users are millennials. Hmm. 80% of moms in the U S are on Pinterest, mm -hmm. which is a lot. That's kind of crazy. So that that's, you know, the, the principles of, of your pins is, is SEO is really SEO and the image itself are the most important parts, parts of it. It's how it's the way to get into the feeds. So, Going back to that original example of Danny's Saturday fun, if yeah. we named the pin do-it-yourself home decor with a pipe and then put Danny's Saturday fun, at least we know we're going to be – we have a chance to still be in that one category. So you kind of want to mix it up a little bit, but you have to focus on categories and topics that are followable. If you don't focus on either one of those – you're never going to be seen. And that's where, you know, you hear sellers say, oh, I was on Pinterest and I got no traction. But you got mom bloggers that are driving 200,000 visits a month to their blogs from their pins. They're, they're going nuts. If you have, if, if you have, whatever your products are, when you put them on Pinterest, if you can target them or make them come across as a target for a woman, you're going to be better off. Even if you're make, even if it's tools, uh, portray it as a gift a gift for your husband or father's day or whatever, it will do better. Uh, you'll, you'll get more eyes on it. That that's a, a, a proven fact. Actually, um, when we run, uh, if, and when we run Pinterest ads, we always uh, include a woman's category in the targeting always. Yeah. So here is a, another place to get, volume from if you go into ads and go into create ad i think create ad cancel hit continue and scroll down here to keywords keyword targeting so this number up here where it says 60 million potential audience size that's bullshit don't pay attention to it okay um, but if we start here and we do, joe, uh, joe listen don't mince your words mate just say what you mean yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, so all I did yeah. is type, typed in home, the word home and I'm yeah. shooting for home decor, but you see it drops, uh, it, it drops in keyword phrases and it gives you monthly search volume. It's mm -hmm. approximate. I mean, every single one of these isn't right at 5 million, but if you look at these 5 million, 5 million, that adds up to about 60 million. That's why that's very deceiving. But, but as you go in and you type this out and add words to it, it will give you more. So see, now we're get, getting more um, here. These are long tail search phrases and it's giving you volume. So you can target these. If we're doing an ad, we're going to target these. And you just do this. If you want to target whatever you want to target, it puts it in the list right here. And it is part of the targeting for your ad. Um, these are great lists. Uh, as an Amazon seller, I would come here when I'm doing my keyword research and I would look at this because you have a lot of the same people on Pinterest that you have on Amazon, same uh, demographics. I would seriously use this to get uh, keyword ideas, especially mm -hmm. if I didn't know what keywords to use. I'd probably yeah. come here just to get a starting list and then go on Amazon and start um, searching them, excuse me, to see what I can find out. Cool. It's actually a great way, a great, a great place to start. Uh, and so then under targeting, under interests, you have, Beauty, weddings, and women's fashion. Those are the three mainly women uh, interests that we'll target one of those three or parenting uh, to always make sure that we're getting our product in front of a woman. So, yeah. and when you do this, when you do your targeting, if you're going to pick a whole category, if you don't uncheck one of them, you don't get good, um, you don't get good um, uh, data. But if you uncheck for some unknown reason, I don't know why, always uncheck one of the categories, subcategories under the main category, and you'll get detailed data for each one of these once you start running the ad. Otherwise, it's all under under beauty uh, for some unknown reason, but that's a, a kink in their, in their thing. So the thing about Pinterest, like Amazon, like, like e-commerce, it's a, a numbers game. Your job is to get your pin in front of as many people as possible. When you first post a pin, uh, Pinterest shows it to your followers. 
That's all they do. They just show it to your followers. Their engagement with the pin determines to Pinterest how much they're going to show your pin to non-followers, but people that have expressed interest in your topic. So it's important that you get some followers. It doesn't have to be a lot. They just have to be good. Uh, it's important that you get some followers and preferably fanatical, engaging followers. So how do you do that? One way is to cross post your social media um, profiles on your other social media profiles. So if you have a following on Instagram or Facebook, tell them, hey, I'm on Pinterest also. Your most fanatical followers are going to be the ones that follow you anywhere and interact with everything. And that's really what you want. Um, there, I know different sellers that, you know, they, they agree to follow each other's products. Um, it, it's the difference between getting traction and not getting traction. So you really need um, in engagement those first 48 hours. Yeah. Uh, and that's the nice thing about Pinterest, though. The, P Pinterest only shows your pins to people that have expressed interest in your category. doesn't show it to everybody else. So these are people that are already looking for you. They're already interested in your product, either for something that they're planning out in the future or something that they're considering now. Uh, over 90% of Pinterest users have stated that they have made purchases based on items that they've seen on Pinterest. And 80-something percent uh, say that they use Pinterest to plan out purchases. Mm -hmm. That's big. Yeah. Also, 80% of the searches are non-brand. That's really good for, for sellers because most sellers don't sell, you know, major brands. So there's a lot, there's a lot of opportunity on Pinterest, but it's a numbers game. If you only have five followers, you're not going to get much traction. You need, you know, you need some followers. You need to build interest. So what's a good way to find followers? I will show you. The best well, way to before, find before you get there, there's a question that relates to what we're talking about now, and we'll get to that. Uh, is there such a thing as posting too many pins or more the better? You, you know, a lot of these so called Pinterest gurus will tell you you have to post 30 times a day. I don't have time to post 30 times a day, and I don't know very many people that do. What's important is that you're consistent. If you post five times a day, post five times every day. If you post once or three times a week, Post three times a week, every single week. Um, there's different programs out there like uh, Tailwind. And um, uh, there's another one. I can't think of the name of it at the moment. But they're, they're scheduling programs. You can schedule Tailwind. You can schedule your pins a month out. Um, and it works. It really works. So when you first start on Pinterest, you don't have that much content to, to post. Yeah. So you're going to want to do 80% of somebody else's of other relevant pins and 20% of your own. And then eventually you'll get enough content to where maybe you can only post your own pins. So on Pinterest, it's really, really important that you don't post things that have nothing to do with your business or that are not relevant to your products. So if you sell clocks, really your whole account should be about clocks and different aspects of clocks. And your board should be about different aspects of clocks. If you want to post something about a kayak, do it on your own personal account or, or put it on a, um, a hidden board, which nobody sees and you don't get penalized for. But people post things for other people to see it. So, you know, it's the, the more detailed and targeted your, your boards and your pins are, the better off you're going to be in the long run. So, you know, that home, like, that home decor item, let's go back here to, to Google, there are probably 100 because I get 100 results. There's 93 results on this page. So there's 93 different home categories and subcategories of the home uh, topic, top level category that you can follow in here. So if you're selling, you know, end, end tables, there's all kinds of things that you that you want to target. Um, home, not home gadgets, home, uh, let's see, see, there's a home office, maybe home, uh, home goods, home improvement projects, I mean, home, anything you can become a do it yourself uh, item is going to get lots of eyes on Pinterest. Do it yourself is the most popular category and topic on Pinterest. So even if you have 
uh, kids' shoes. You know, you sell kids' shoes. How does that become do-it-yourself? Well, you can do a board about uh, do-it-yourself um, uh, home decor as far as uh, cleaning for, you know, organizing your shoes. You can do uh, do-it-yourself getting dressed for kids. There's all, you know, you, you, there's different angles, but you got to relate it to women. You got to relate it to kids. If you have a product that, you know, if you sell, if you sell kids products, you sell pets products, people are those just in general, people are fanatical about those categories. Use good images. Um, you put humor in your images. Uh, you know, don't make every single, I mean, the home category, it's kind of bland. You know, you look at these, some of these pins and there's, you know, it's just, there's no, no, nothing funny about it. You know, something like this, that's okay. People love kids, but it, you know, don't be afraid to put a little humor. There you go. Like this one here. Don't put, be afraid to put a little, little bit of humor in your pins. People, people don't read ads. People read things that interest them. Uh, the most popular pins on Pinterest are lists just like this. This one sucks because it's really difficult to read, but these are the most popular pins on Pinterest. Uh, I would probably, if I had a list like this, I would probably only put half of it on here. And I would put at the bottom right here, a little call to action that says for the other half, go to this URL. And I'd use that as a lead magnet to get their, uh, to get their emails. Um, top gifts for the jet setter, like this one here, I would, you know, they, they used images. I might put a couple of words on what some of them are, but use it, you know, put, use it as a call to action to click. You want them to click. Uh, Pinterest is the only site that doesn't have a problem with people clicking off of their site. Pinterest is okay with that. Uh, they want you to do that. Um, and you know, I, I see people all the time with no URLs on their, uh, on their pins. So, so, this is where they would put the URL so that it's good. There's a URL, but I see pins all the time and no URLs. What's the sense of having a pin if you're not giving them someplace to go or mm. give them information? You know, there's, you can't post a pin anymore. This is an older pin. It has no title, no description. Pinterest won't even let you post this anymore without putting a title and a description on it. Yeah. Henrietta says we post 12 pins a day, every day, only two related to our products. 10 others are related to a simple exercise, home fidgets, parenting, Motivational pins, we get close to a quarter of a million views a month, but only less than 1,000 followers. See, that's really good. That's effective. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll take, qual I'll take quanti quality over quantity any day of the week yeah. uh, in terms of followers. That's really good. Hmm. That, that's actually excellent. Um, and then that's the, that's the goal. So if you're trying to, to find followers, that's where I started. So to find followers, let's say, well, we're still talking about home decor. So let's do a home decor search. Home decor. Over here, you have this drop down here and it says all pins, your pins, video pins, people and boards. People. These are going to be the influencers. The hell? Oh, I clicked videos. So there we go. So this is, they didn't remove the keywords this is what the keywords used to look like they didn't remove it from video searches yet so but if you go to people these are the influencers in the home decor category on pinterest so it makes sense that if somebody's following this lady because she's a, a home decor person they might also follow you because you have home decor products they just don't know who you are yet so you you want them to find out who you are so you come here you do your search, you click over here to people. This is how you start in the very beginning to, to build followers. And what we look for is I'm generally looking for, and I want to see a, num a good number of boards. So somebody see this is actually, this is full. A lot of times you come in here and there's, there's like two boards, 15 followers. Don't follow those people. That doesn't do you any good. But see, this is actually a great category. Most categories are nowhere near this good. But these are some, you know, some serious influencers in here. So I would look at this and I would follow her. She's got a million followers, 93 boards. Chances are a, a portion of the people that you follow will follow you back, which exposes them to 
your pins and it exposes their followers to your pins as well. So that's how you build, um, that's how you build followers. So if I were to follow this woman, I'd click here, I'd follow her, I'd scroll down here to community. And it's going to show me who follows her and who she follows. So first I'll look at who she follows. Uh, and I'll, so I'll click here and I'll go through this list and I'm looking for people in the home home decor influencers. Basically, a lot of times we all have a, a way of following you know, who we you know, want to emulate. So you, you, you're going to get good. Um, you're going to get good accounts in here and other people to follow. And it's the same thing. You're looking for people with a, a thousand followers. See, this is a good one to follow. If these images are home decor images, I'm, you know, I'm, if I'm, if I'm looking to build my home decor following, I'm not going to follow her because she's about uh, being an entre entrepreneur. I'm looking for accounts that show home decor, home decor items in it. Uh, Again, it's about keeping your account very focused on your topic. Uh, the more you dilute your account, the more you're sending mixed signals to Pinterest. And then Pinterest becomes confused and will show your home decor item to, you know, somebody's garage thing. Uh, and that's it's just like Amazon. When you first put up a new product on Amazon, it's really important that the signal that you send to Amazon about what you want to rank for is based on your keywords. You don't want to put, you know, all kinds of uh, side keywords and peripheral keywords in your listing at first until Amazon is very, very clear that what you're selling is an end table and not a China cabinet. Hmm. Uh, so it's, it's you, tr you know, the algorithms are only as smart as the people that program them. And some of those people are not the smartest people in the world. So really, no matter what platform you're on, you still have to train the algorithm at first to understand what it is that you want to appear for. Yeah, that makes sense. So if we were to wrap what on what we've covered so far, what are the top five things that people should be paying attention to? SEO mm -hmm. and following the uh, categories that have followers. Something I, I learned last night, actually, uh, from one of my clients, Lewis, is that uh, you pins that come up that rank well. We were doing SEO on his website, and we were looking at uh, blog posts of his, and we were talking about how we want to own as much real estate on page one as possible. So if we were to search for home decor, we want to see his Amazon listing on page one. We want to see his website product on page one. We want to see his blog post on page one. We maybe want to see a review on page one or a video of his. We want six of the entries on page one to refer to his site or his product in one way, shape, or form. Pinterest ranks very well on Google, but yeah. Pinterest SEO is is different than Google SEO. I, I learned this last night. I did not realize this. So it it doesn't hurt to have a board that's not an additional board that's not named after one of these categories, but that is strictly focused on your keyword phrase. So, for example, home decor. You have a home decor board, and in that home decor board, you only put pins with the words home decor in the title, period. Mm -hmm. And you, that will rank. Right. So you make sure that your pins are in that board as well. And that's a reference to your board on your profile. It's uh, it's ingenious trick, um, but it, you, it's all about real estate. You know, if, if I can't be in position of one on the Google rankings, I'll take two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm mm -hmm. OK with that. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. Um, and that's really the, the goal is is to own own page one. Whether you have you're in position one or not, you want to own page one. Nobody can nobody can fight you with that. So back to Pinterest. So we covered um, the SEO imagery, making sure that your images are interesting and uh, pop out. You know, have some using color. saturation, not yep. using them on 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 solid colors, but don't do them on humans because you don't want to turn them orange like Donald Trump to use right. your words. Yeah. 
bright springy colors work the best uh, yeah. as opposed to muted colors. They recommend against using muted colors. Um, the other thing is uh, engaged followers. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it needs to be people that are engaged, engaging, yeah. um, that you want them to engage with your pins when you first post them. When you first post your product or you first post a piece of content, pin it immediately. Hmm. Pin, you are the creator. So Pinterest wants you to pin, be the one that pins it because you're telling Pinterest, hey, this is what my product is. This is what it's about. This is how you should classify it. Always pin your own product first. Now a new feature on Pinterest is from that day forward, any, but any pin that has your URL on it, all the analytics are on that initial pin. They all come back to that initial pin, which is really good for uh, trying to figure out, you know, who's look, how many people are looking at your, your things and uh, stuff like that. Um, scheduling pins being consistent. That's really, really important. Tailwind is a great program for scheduling your pins. And it has uh, what's called Tailwind um, Tribes, mm -hmm. which are kind of like group boards, but it's like like people getting together and Basically, you're agreeing to engage and to repin each other's pins. Um, it's a great way to get some engagement for your pins uh, and find like-minded people. Um, Makes sense. So, what is the what's the best way that people can reach you, mate? Uh, I'm on Facebook and on my website, e-commerce optimizer. Excellent, guys. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, actually, there's a quick question here from Matthew. Matt Parker here, sorry. Tell me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is cutting the bullshit is the motto, and that honestly, it is direct line to the market on this platform. Sounds like my kind of platform. So it's either like a statement stroke um, question there. But uh, the question we should have brought to light earlier on, side B, do a Zapier or Buffer schedule? Yep, sure do. Cool. All right, let's close that there. I'll be back here at 4 p.m. BST again tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Sorry. Stay home, stay safe, take care of your family. Much love. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.